All right, let us pray. Wise and eternal God, we thank you once again for allowing us to be into your house one more time. We thank you for our life, health, and strength, Father. We thank you for protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us for any sins that we committed. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would decrease us, increase you, so that we may live better, walk better, talk better, serve better than we ever have before. Uh, bless those who are here, those that desire to be here and couldn't, and those who will be watching and listening. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you do and who you are. Yes. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're on lesson three. Um, a child saved is a soul saved, plus a life. Our background reading is coming from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, Matthew 19, verses 13 through 15. Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 4, and devotional readings from 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 16 and 18. Central verses coming from Proverbs 22, 6, which reads, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, <clears throat> What's that 2 Kings you said? Uh, 2 Kings 2, 23 through 25. 22. 22 to 25? Yeah, 23 25. Okay. All right. And we'll read the intro and then we'll get into the lesson. The saints have always been interested in the ministry of children and often said, the children are the church of tomorrow. Ooh. But they found that, that they found out that to be the church of tomorrow, they must be involved in the church of today. Ooh. The Church of God in Christ is proud to say that the ministries of the church include children of all ages. One of the main children's ministries is the Sunshine Band, which is designed for all children from ages 2 to 12. Yes, These children are still in their formative years and are closely attached to their mothers. Mm -hmm. The church knows that the parents, especially the mothers, are the first teachers of the children. That's right. The church also provided classes during the Sunday school hour for children, providing the very best teachers they could find to teach and train their children, mm -hmm. as well as extended Sunday school during the summer months called Vacation Bible School, which involves the children of the church in the community. Mm -hmm. The Church of God in Christ also has an auxiliary for the youth, of, for the youth from ages 13 to 19, the purity class, provides Bible training as well as life skills to these young people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the central verse says, you know, you train up a child in the way he should go. Mm -hmm. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, you can't train up a child in the way he should go if you're not going the way you should go. <laughs> and you have a lot of people that um, have kids mm -hmm. and have not shown themselves to be mature enough to have kids, mm -hmm. have not shown themselves to be the very best leaders mm -hmm. or teachers or providers because in order to in, in order to do those things for another life, you have to be doing those things in your life also. Right. You know, it's not just the church but in society that we have to take advantage of opportunities that we're given. Mm -hmm. And so, especially when you realize that you are responsible for another life that's coming into this world. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand that people have kids way before they're ready. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. But when it happens, you need to get ready for what's coming. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of things that are going on in the world right now are the result of kids who have been brought into the world. They either haven't been given proper guidance or they haven't responded to it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're like back in the Old Testament where when they had problems with children, and you know, say after the parents did everything they were supposed to, mm -hmm. they would bring them, you know, they brought them to the leaders, mm -hmm. and they took the kids outside and they stoned them. Mm -hmm. You know, rebellious kids, they don't listen, they don't want to do this and that, and they brought all the other children out to, for the, to use this person as an example. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be rebellious to your mother and your father, you want to do what you want to do, this is what will happen to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, our, you know, we don't do that now, but we laws have made things so that we can try to weaken the hold that parents have on mm -hmm. kids 
that the kids will do anything they want to, and they try to lock up or punish the parents for being mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that the Word of God tells us that you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. Mm -hmm. And I just look at the way things happen now, and look at the way God does things, and God's way produces less problems than the way things are now. Mm -hmm. And so, as parents, one, you can't be scared of your kids because you're the one that brought them in. True. You're responsible for how they come out. Mm -hmm. um, and especially as men, men are responsible for how, how their family goes. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether you dare or not, regardless of whether you get along with your, you know, child's mother or not, you are responsible for how your children behave. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back to the Garden of Eden when, you know, Adam and Eve bit the apple. Or not the apple, they bit the fruit. You know, most people think it's the apple, but it's fruit. Mm -hmm. And when God came through and he asked them what happened when they knew they were naked, Adam passed the book to Eve, mm -hmm. Eve passed the book to the serpent, and then after God finished talking to the serpent, he went mm -hmm. back to Adam and said, where were you? Because you were the one I told to protect until the garden. Mm -hmm. He was the one that knew that he wasn't supposed to eat from the tree. You know, that's why I said the woman was deceived, but Adam seemed, mm -hmm. seemed willful. And so when those things happen, that falls on men because regardless of whether you get along or not, regardless of how your family's structure is set up, mm -hmm. you are responsible for teaching your kids. Mm -hmm. You're responsible for your wife. You're responsible for the direction your family goes. You know, it's not always about providing and making money because you can make money and your family could be going down in the toilet mm -hmm. because you're not being stepping up and taking your rightful place where God sets you up for. Mm -hmm. You know, when we say, you know, wives submit to your husbands, it's not that the husband is a dictator over you. Mm -hmm. It's just that asking the wives to understand the authority and the accountability that God has placed on him mm -hmm. for this family. Because no matter what happens, he has to stand before judgment. And he has to give an account on how his family did. Now, if he's done everything he's supposed to do and the family decides to do their own thing, it's no blood on his hands. He's not accountable for that. Mm -hmm. But if he if he if they're doing these things because he wasn't the one teaching them, he wasn't the one um, instilling these values into them and providing for them, now it's his fault. And so there are a lot of people out here that his kids are going around and they're doing things because men weren't there to establish those principles and establish that integrity and that accountability in the children. They weren't there to be involved in the family and like it's not it's not all men, it's got some you know, we know about women who like to yeah. get upset and use kids against men and stuff, and mm -hmm. that's not good either because either way it goes, all you're doing is hurting the family. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether y'all together or not, you're still a family. You still let him mm -hmm. have that influence on his kids. He's mm -hmm. still responsible for how they, how they come out. Mm -hmm. You know, still have that great relationship. You might not be together, but you still can work together for right. your kids because just you're both still accountable for that. And if you're standing in the way of him, then you are accountable for him not mm -hmm. being able to um, rear the kids and train them up in a way that you go. You know, Bible tells us that a foolish woman brings destruction to her own house. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are a lot of foolish women, foolish women out here who are caught up in their own feelings because he don't want you no more, or they doing better. He's doing better now than he was when he was with you, and you're in your feelings, and you're using that to try to get back at him, mm -hmm. and don't realize that you're. It's a domino effect. You're just, you know, bringing that down on your kids also. But that's why it's up to us, especially in the church, to teach the kids in the church about the proper way to worship God. That's true. And you don't go, you don't do it all the time by teaching. You do it by living. Mm. You know, we come to church and we hear preaching, and preaching gets you, you know, draws you into the Word of God. We bring. Bible studies, Sunday schools, or YPWWs, or whatever else we have that we're able to use to break down a word and you know topical teaching and to give you some things that you may not get anywhere else. But it's up to the parents to carry that on at home, to live a life that's pleasing to God, to where it's not just taught when they come to church. Um, as said before, there was a, a preacher riding down the road with one of his friends, and his son was in the back. And the preacher was talking, and his son said, Daddy, are you telling the truth or are you just preaching? <laughs> now that's a sad situation when your, your kids know whether are you just putting on a show or are you actually telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And 
you go ask your kids, your, no one knows you better than your family. Okay. You know, you can be saved and sanctified here, you can dance and shout all over the church. Mm -hmm. But when we get home, yep. does the attitude where you show that in front of the people, mm -hmm. are you still that same way at home in front of your kids? Mm -hmm. Are you encouraging? Are you polite and respectful in church? Or are you still that same way at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta put your foot down on some things, but are you creating an environment to where your kids see that this is not just show, this is a lifestyle? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible told us to make disciples of all men and women. You know, all ethnic groups. Discipleship is a lifestyle. You know, we got too many people that come to church and they just come to church and get word and they think it's just something to do. They think they just honor God because they came to church for a couple mm -hmm. hours on Sunday. No, this is an ongoing thing. And especially with our kids because, you know, the word tells us that we're supposed to be the ones that um, teach them about the word of God. We're supposed to talk to them about it in the morning. During, uh, during the day, at night. We're the ones supposed to put the reminders on the doorposts and things yeah, to where you create an environment to where you are exposed to God so much that when God blesses you, when God takes you away from us, when you go off to college and go to the military or wherever, mm -hmm. and God starts blessing you with new opportunities and you meet new people, that you don't forget about the God who took care of you, mm -hmm. the God who blessed you. And that was the warning that he gave Joshua. He said, so when you get into this land, this land with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about the God that brought you in here. Because you can, God can bless you so good that you can forget about the God that blessed you. Mm -hmm. You get so wrapped up in new cars, new jobs, and mm -hmm. maybe the Lord allows you to travel and you're going here and there, and you know, maybe you can get famous. Mm -hmm. Exposed to new people, new situations, and you get so involved in that that you forget to thank the God that brought you there. Mm -hmm. The one who was there when you didn't have this, and you didn't have a pot to PN, when you didn't have a window to throw it out of, when you barely had food on the table, you didn't know where you, you were going to sleep tonight, you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, their kids are involved in the situation. Now, I understand these things are temporary, but during those temporary times, keep your focus on God. Mm -hmm. Let them know that, look, we're, this is temporary, we're going through this, but we're still going to pray, we're still going to thank the Lord for what He's done, mm -hmm. we're still going to thank the Lord for the favor He's shown us to people because people don't have to be nice to you. That's true. People don't have to let you sleep on their couch. They don't have to fix you an extra plate on food they have. But because of the favor that um, we have with the Lord and because he puts it on the hearts of those around us, he uses those people to help take care of us. And then when we get into a position where better days and you know finances are better and you got room and stuff that you can do the same thing for us. Instead of forgetting about how God looked out for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're so high and mighty now to where um, you don't think you're supposed to help other people. You know, it says preach one, teach one. If mm -hmm. you get if you get up to a situation, you go back and you help somebody else get into that situation too. You know, a lot of things in our I'm thinking back in our community and thinking about when I was growing up, especially since um, the internet came and we're exposed to a lot more information that I really didn't have people that I knew of mm -hmm. that were financially literate, that where they came back and said, okay, this is where you need to do this and you need to do this and start thinking about this and that. You know, now you get it now, you can go online, you can go anywhere and find it. Mm -hmm. um, saw an article last night about there was a father and a son that was doing it, starting with kids that were eight-year-olds, that they could come and teach them about financial literacy and things. And I was thinking like, well, we didn't have that because we didn't know it. And if you knew people who were in it, they didn't take the time to come and think that they needed to teach those kids they were around. Mm -hmm. Because some people have the attitude where I got here, I didn't have nobody to teach me. So you had to figure it out on your own. And that's not what we're called to do. If you figured it out on your own, if you kick the door down, show everybody else where the door is. You know, you can teach people how to do, how to dress, how to act in these certain situations. Or when you're looking for certain careers and things. Now, it's up to them whether they want to follow the advice or not. But it's up to us to teach them. You know, same thing about, you know, we're teaching our kids about the Word of God. It's, I can teach you this. Now, it's up to you. I say, I'm training you up in the way you should go. Now, it's up to you to decide whether you want to go this way or not. You know, the Word of God is what a lamp into our feet and a light to our path. Now, you can go on your own path. 
you might not, you might not have this light here if you're not step forward, um, going in the way that the Lord wants you to go. But there are certain things in life that we're not going to receive or we're not going to experience unless we're doing it the way the Lord has set forth. That's so true. And so, not only teaching us, but then, like I said, a child saved is a soul saved. So, do we care enough about those around us? Do we care enough about kids who are kids and kids who are not even ours? You know, you used to have a, a time where, you know, you have somebody, they'll, they'll look after you like you were their own kid. Exactly. We're not going to let you get in trouble. It's not just, I got my kids here, y'all do what y'all want to do. Where we can talk to you and correct you, and then you didn't have parents jumping in and stopping you. Mm -hmm. Like if, you, if they're telling them the right thing, don't don't jump in. You should reinforce what they're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But now we get to a point where when you don't know them, so you shouldn't be talking to them and saying and saying this stuff to them. And then when they get in trouble, then we're trying to figure out well why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. Because people who were here to correct you, you didn't want you didn't want to correct you. So it's too late now when you. You locked up in the system and you paying lawyers and all kind of legal fees and stuff when all you had to do was listen to somebody who was telling you, hey, don't do this. Well, you know, we teaching people about being respectful, about being accountable, about, you know, just the way the way that we're supposed to live, what's expected of us. You know, that's say it always comes back to us. Because like I said, once again, if you are not doing what you're supposed to do. You don't have a place to tell somebody else what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Lead by example. And then that way they can just watch you and follow what you do. That's right. You know, we talked about this um, many times, especially about how churches go and how things get out of that because they had examples. You have a bad example, then if you don't know any different, you're going to follow after that bad example. That's true. So if you going to go into the ministry, if you think it's all about money, because the example that you had were in it for the money, you're gonna go after that same, you're gonna go after it the same way until you learn different. You know, understand that it's not it's not something to play around with. It's not about a feeling. And a lot of people fall out of church because they didn't feel the spirit. Well it's not about a feeling, it's about knowing. The relationship is do you know? And how do we know you know if you're not being exposed to Mm -hmm. The Word of God, and I, not only the Word of God, the will of God, and the character of God. Now you have to understand how God's character is, and once you get, it's like understanding a person. Once I know how you think, and how you feel, mm -hmm. and I see the kind of person you are when it comes to helping other people, and the Word of things you get, I, can under, I get a better understanding of you. Mm -hmm. So that way, if someone says something bad about you, I'm like, you know, that's not them. You know, that, you must got somebody else. Because I know this person. Mm -hmm. They don't think like that. They don't act like that. Mm -hmm. Those words don't come out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. But see, when you, when you don't take time to know somebody, they can just come spew any kind of lie to you and you believe it. Mm -hmm. That's why people have bad experiences in church because, you know, we talked about last week about the Church of the Saints Hospital. Is that people are here for different reasons. Everybody, here, everybody who's come to see this pew, I don't care how much they look like they got it together, I don't care how, how blessed they talk and how much they praise God. Everybody in here is here for a reason. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. If you were that perfect, you wouldn't need to come to church. Mm -hmm. Perfect people are not in church. Everybody's in here for a reason, and some reasons aren't good. Some people are here because some people are here because they want to hear a word from the Lord. Some people are here because they want to critique the word from the Lord that so. they get. Some people are here because they want to look at what you're wearing. Some people are here because they want to just find what they can point out about people. Some people are here trying to figure out whether you're going to say something to set them on fire. Mm -hmm. Some people are here just to take instead of figuring out what they can bring to service. Mm -hmm. But for no matter what reason it is, don't let that discourage you from coming, from coming to church. Mm -hmm. You know, just like kids, all kids are different. We don't know what they've been through. We don't know what they're exposed to. But the best way to do go about it is go about it with love. Yes. And keep, kids aren't different. It's just that parents have been different. Mm -hmm. All kids like this. One. They may not like it when you give it to them, but when they come back years later and say, I thank you for yeah, when you're doing so this. I thank you for being the way that you were. That is so true. Because when you start seeing stuff happening, you start having kids, you want them to be that same way. To where you didn't let me go out here any time of the night. You didn't let me go 
out when I wanted to go here and there and build. No, because you're protecting me. Because anything can happen. And most kids don't understand that. They think you just you just don't want me to have no fun or nothing. No, we want you to have fun, but yeah. you gotta understand there's there's times and places for things. And you don't need to be out here with me mm-hmm. all the yes. time yes. And so not only that, then we also have to understand about what our kids is, we have to make time to actually learn about our kids, to talk to them, to make sure that we know what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. Not to where we're so busy chasing money or anything else that we think mm-hmm. we just buy stuff and it's making our kids happy and we don't really understand what's going on with them. Mm-hmm. You know, I read last night, I read a suicide note, suicide note from this 15 year old girl that she had wrote to her parents. And she was saying, she was letting them know that she was hoping they were to ask her what was going on, but they weren't paying attention to the signs. But she didn't say anything either. And so she said she was letting them know that there was something that was in her that was missing, that she was a void that needed to be filled. Ooh. And her uncle had came to stay with them, and he had ended up messing around with her. And apparently that was feeling that void at the time until he had to end up leaving. But he ne- she never told them about it. Mm-hmm. But even though they're working and they're busy and they're making sure she has the best stuff, but they never took the time to just like see what was going on with her. Mm-hmm. And she's writing down all of this in this note. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we gotta don't get so caught up chasing a bag or whatever they were. You don't chase your kids. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't ever be too busy to sit down and say, how's your day? What's going on? Then you have to create that environment to where you can talk to us about anything. Mm-hmm. Especially at home. Home should be the safest place a child is. Exactly. Where you can go and you can talk and you can let me know what's going on. Yeah. And not get, you know, yeah. all kind of rejection and criticism things. Now, there's some things you're going to say that you're going to blow up at if they do think that are stupid or could get them in trouble, but then we calm down and we, you know, help them. But we have to let them know that you have not done anything so bad mm. that you can't come and talk to us. Mm. Because we hear, we, how can we protect you if you don't say anything? Mm. But then you have to let your kids know that you can come talk to me about anything. I don't care what it is. I don't care what happened. Oh, anything done, anybody did anything to you, you come talk to me. Mm. It ain't about you protecting them getting in trouble. I'm here to protect you. Because if you know what it is, I'll deal with them. Exactly. You can't protect them because it was their their situation. They should have been trying protecting you because he she should have never been in that situation. Mm-hmm. And so and there's lots of people that go through that, and where it's family, friends, and stuff. And you know, even pastor stuff talks all the time. You gotta be careful about everybody you bring around your kids. Exactly. Because you never know. Oh, be careful with everybody. Bring. So I say, we, but we gotta create that environment to where if something is going on. Where we need to, where you can talk to, where you know, where parents, but we're closer, where I understand how you're feeling. Why do you feel like this? Okay, how long have you been feeling this way? And we talk and, you know, feel that boy. That boy could have been filled by Jesus mm-hmm. if we were doing what we were supposed to do. Because mm-hmm. everybody has that point, that point where they have something they're, they, they're missing out on, there's something that they don't feel complete. Mm-hmm. And that's an opportunity for us to talk to them about the Lord. Because right. the Lord can't feel that, ain't nothing gonna feel. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's temporary, but. It still didn't stop her from this young woman, this young lady from taking her life. It's going up, and things are happening. People going to shoot up schools and things. Um, you talked about in Oregon where the, the coach had stopped a young guy from going in and shooting up the school. They said and all he needed was a hug. So he wasn't getting at home. If he was getting this at home, that could have changed the whole dynamic. Kind of you know, you put so much pressure on your kids to do this and. You don't pay attention to the grades falling and the, to what they're doing, their attitudes changing, they doing things they didn't used to do. Obviously something's wrong. We need to sit down and have a talk. But some people get so busy and you know like her grades were, her grades were dropping, they got her a tutor instead of saying, well, hey, you used to be up here, your grades went, what's going on? Mm-hmm. No, something's changed. You gotta pay attention to these drastic changes. Exactly. So you know, that's the same thing with us while we can't get so caught up in living our life and we're being so holier than thou that we don't pay attention to the change in other people also. Like I said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Am I my sister's keeper? Yes. 
And it's up to us to protect people, to reach out to people, to nurture people, to notice the changes in your family, notice the changes in your spouses. You know, like I said, you know, early, like a man not supposed to dictate, be a dictator over his wife. He's supposed to edify her and encourage her. You don't be so proud when if she if it causes her to you know live or do something better than you or she make more money than you or something don't get the attitude in it. That's what you're supposed to do. You want all men, all members of your family to receive everything that the Lord has for them. Exactly. You make more money than me, that's fine. If, it's, if you're gonna increase our standard of living, uh -huh. go get it. Matter of fact, they can give you five hundred dollars for you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we're about that. We're about everything who creating an environment to where everybody in the family is, is thriving. Like I said, everything's not going to go good. But it has to be a place where no matter what happens, we can sit down and we can talk about it. We can go to the Lord together about it. To where you know that the world will do whatever, but we can come here and you can be protected, you can be encouraged, you can be edified. And as we raise those environments with our kids, our kids go on and they create that same environment with their families too. And the only way you're going to break these generational curses and things is somebody has to make a stand mm -hmm. to decide that it stops here. Might as well be. It has to stop here. Mm -hmm. We have to change it with, in our situation. Mm -hmm. Then we got our kids and they change it and they change it and it keeps, you know, going on and on and on and spreading. Mm -hmm. But like I say, it, it's going to cause us to have to think about more than, uh, more than ourselves. Yes. We can't just think about our pleasures and what we want what I want you to do instead of me training you up to do what the Lord wants. Mm -hmm. I may want you to do one thing, but the Lord designed you to do something else. I'm preparing you for that. Now you got you have your own dreams, you have your own um, goals and things you want to accomplish. And I'm gonna help try to point you in that direction and help you encourage help you get that the best way I can. Now mm -hmm. don't be surprised if the Lord switches up all your dreams and goals and says yep. go this way. Yep. Be ready for it. Because all of this is going to improve your life. It's going to make things better. Mm -hmm. You know, you go through the pain, but you're going to grow, and you're going to be able to help a lot more people than you would yes. on this way. And so, and say this, you know, we talk about children and parents, but we're all children of God. Mm -hmm. We all belong to the Lord. And so, mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is go for everybody. You know, we're not here to put people down. We're here to, here to save them. I can't put you down and then go back and say how much I love the Lord and I hate you. And they say the love you lie the truth, not me. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. I figured this out. It's not about how I feel. My feelings are not wrong. My feelings will keep me from sharing the Lord with you, and I might be the last person you come in contact with. So how would you feel about that? I say we don't want blood on our hands. I definitely don't want to be there. I don't want you to miss out on that, especially when the Lord sends you to somebody and says, you know, I know you'll do it. But someone missed out on healing or blessing or something else because you want what you want. That's true. That's all. That's pretty much blessing. Anybody got anything you want to add? Yeah, I thank God for the lesson today and thank God how you Dickie brought, it, brought out the lesson. Uh, a child saves, a child soul saved. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think a, a child saved is a soul saved plus a life. And that, and, and it is, and it, it is very important that uh, our children be brought up in the way that the Bible said. And uh, I, I heard you say couple things because see we, we have to learn and a lot of us get to it. We have to be more conservative and more concerned for our kids all the time. And we don't. We don't spend enough time a lot of time with our kids to, to figure out what's going on when we assume they're coming home making decent grades and we feed them and clothe them and they listen to us every now and then to tell them and we assume everything is all right. But it's more to raising a child, and I tell people this too when I talk to them, uh, young people, it's more to raising a child than feeding them and putting clothes on them and giving them shelter over the head. It's more to, that, that's not raising a child. Those are, those are things that, 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 that you provide for them that's, uh, that they need. 
But they also need to be trained, like the Bible said. Train them up in the way that they should go. They're not going to be home all the time. And some of us fall guilty with, we, we quick to, uh, to, to pull a Bible, grab a Bible right quick and slap the word in the children's face when the children ain't doing anything. Mm -hmm. We don't need to do that. We teach them, they're learning at the yeah. church. We need to teach them to work, because see, when they go to school, they ain't teaching them about this. Mm -hmm. Every now and then they might say a little thing and they ain't teaching them. They teaching them what the world is like and how, how, what happens in the world. And we train them and let them know. And you're right. We need to let our children feel like they can come to us about anything. I don't care, I don't care if it's anything sexual. I don't think it is. I don't care what it is. They should be able to come to us by anything that's on their mind or they're, they're concerned about. Without me getting mad, like, girl, you don't need, you don't need to learn that wait till you get old enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do all that because you don't know what's going on in, in children. Children is very inquisitive, very inquisitive, and and, and, and and you can't figure them out a lot of time. So, but you you know we we want to train our children how how first we got to do them at home, train them home. We can't wait till they you know, they'll be sent them to school and expect the teachers to do it. Because a lot of parents, they do that. They don't, they, they, that children run like they ever, run up right here, do what they want to do right now. And we expect when they come to school or to school, the teacher's going to teach them. <coughs> we can't do that. And we got to let them know. I remember when we was coming up, my mom and daddy, we used to like to play ball. Like they used to always tell us, because there's certain kids is down the street that they know, parents know that the kids ain't much good in them because they know about them. And they tell us, yeah, you don't need to be playing with that boy, That's, that boy is bad. You know, you don't, you don't need to be playing with that boy because you're going to end up... You know, the only thing we see, somebody to play with. Mm -hmm. But they see further than what we see. You see, and, and, and later on in, the, in the, the years, when we growing up a little bit, we'll find out that the same people that our parents were teaching us to stay away from around, they weren't telling us because they wanted, they, 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 they hated the people. They was looking out for us, mm -hmm. okay? Find out later on down the line, the kid done stole something, got put in jail. They did this and they did that. They disrespectful to the people, the children. We need to teach our children. When the, when the Bible say love your, <laughs> be, you said that's a love that our mother and your father and all. They're not just talking about you and your, and your wife. I was taught that in the adults, that yes, we should be so. teaching that to our children, mm -hmm. you see? And we want them to train, and just because you train them up, 